three fifty nine in the morning and I was I woke up I saw mad notifications on my phone about the WWE app which really is a fucking waste of time because it kills my batteries faster than both Facebook Facebook Messenger and Instagram and Twitter and all these other bullshit apps I probably don't need but I got three notifications. One of them involved the fact that John Cena won the title from against Alberto Del Rio in a Hell in a Cell match, which I thought was bullshit because it's a Hell in a Cell match. That's not going to showcase the fact that Del Rio can capitalize on Cena's elbow injury, and it's not going to showcase a big return for Cena. Survivor Series can do that. Hell, TLC can demonstrate the issue of Cena's elbow and give him more time for people to be in to anticipate his return. But of course, ratings are even worse than last year's big plummet. And that can only mean terrible things for 2014 if the trend continues. But... For now, Cena has the most world title reigns of anyone in the current roster, and that includes Triple H, who has 13. Cena has 14 right now, so he has the opportunity to go for that Ric Flair record. Yay, us. I don't know. I guess that's supposed to be something we cheer for. And... Randy Orton got the title from Daniel Bryan, which I thought was a little ridiculous because Orton only draws money as a heel, depending on who he's feuding with. He draws when he's up against guys like Cena, and now that D. Bryan is becoming more of a face, he's He's fighting like a superstar, like a top draw. You know, he's hulking up now. He's got the same move sets, but he's using them like a Hogan. A really technical Dow Hogan. Where Orton would, Orton would be the shitty Crow Mag heel. And it's funny that this. This is just extending a feud that's already losing more and more value. Early October was good, but now it's late October and shit's getting dull, nigga. And now we're doing Big Show in the midst of this authoritarian feud, since it's all about Triple H and Stephanie being the abusive authority. Nah, nigga. You saw what happened last time Big Show was with an authority, and he was in a crossroad, and he didn't know whether to feud with authority or with a superstar face. We got the John Laurinaitis bullshit, and that was only wavy when my nigga Brock Lesnar made his return. After that, it was just total shit, and it culminated in a shitty ending. You don't utilize Big Show and try to give him different angles and characteristics and personalities and test him out because he sucks as an actor now he does say funny shit and badass shit every now and then I remember when he said that pimps up hose down thing to Lita quoting Godfather that was cool make him do that shit don't make him do some like don't try to make him cry. That's so dumb. And then you made him make those hamster faces when he was ready to go up to Triple H and deck him. Really? He looked like he wanted to kill a man with his bare hands. And you just make him do that knockout punch? If the nigga wanted to knock the guy out, he would just, like... He wouldn't have made a big deal of it and, like, had his emotions flow and his passions build up. He would have just decked Triple H. And the smart marks are probably pissed because now Cena and Orton are both championships. 
Orton until he becomes irrelevant again. And Cena until we can get more title reigns and flip flop and get back to the old WWE shit. Go for that Ric Flair record. But truthfully speaking, what makes this feel funny, because I was loving it for the first few months, it's the fact that the super couples and E Network and that based that reality show that lasted only a few weeks involving the Divas, Total Divas. That shit was <laughs> now it's all about the super couples. It's all about John Cena and Nikki Bella, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella, the fucking Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Who cares? I don't care about these couples. Triple H is up here with that you jelly face all the time. Like, no, nobody's fucking jealous. My nigga, that nigga needs to calm down. How would you feel if I did that? What if I just got a random girlfriend all of a sudden, and I brought her up in every video, I'm just like, I'm here with her, I'm like, yo man, I know y'all niggas jelly right now. Yo, yo we the shit right now, this, this is the right couple right here, this is that Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye, Kim K, this is, this is that shit right here, nigga. This is, this is the couple, man. We're the shit right now. It doesn't make me look like I have more status. It doesn't make me look more powerful or intimidating. It just makes me look like a dick that has a girl right next to him. Y'all niggas wouldn't feel that shit. I know y'all niggas wouldn't like that. The reason I say y'all is even the chicks are somewhat dumbstruck by this. Like, even the girls, and girls love super couples. That's what makes soap operas draw, that's what makes TMZ so successful. Even they don't give a fuck that Triple H got that chick. They don't. She like, what, 36? Alright, still young, still fresh. She's so bad, especially when she got that letter on, but... Nobody give a fuck, nigga? Nobody give a fuck. You got Triple H out there, and his hairline is still on point, unlike Shawn Michaels, but... No one give a fuck. Now what's gonna happen? They have no idea what to do with this angle, so they're just gonna throw... Fucking Big Show... And Big Show feces everywhere. Granted, I didn't buy a pay-per-view. So I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you don't have rights to complain. Well, I'm not complaining. I'm ranting. Semantics aside, I'm not really asking for the WWE to make much changes, because they could hit all-time low ratings, and I'd still watch their free television shows. I'm still entertained by it particularly because I can riff on it all I want and I'm not the type of phony internet dumbass that thinks that capitalism needs to be democratized that the voice of the fans are relevant one thing I don't like about democracy beating capitalism especially in the gaming industry is that now it's all about fan input. What do you want for this? What do you want for that? Uh, we could throw in this, but you gotta fund us. We need the funding for that shit. For your fantasy orgasm 2.0 bullshit. Your fan wet dream. I don't really care about that. All I care about is a very streamlined or it's tearing away artistic expression. When musicians, for example, when musicians say that they write their music for themselves, 
I appreciate that. It's basically you expressing your artistic creativity. And that's how these WWE storylines should play out. Alright, you can try to make an appeal to this demographic, to that demographic. Off the Road Show talks about this shit all the time. But then when Schlag Daddy talks about we need to make a show for BET and then one for Univision or Telemundo to pull in those global ratings, I'm thinking, no, that's bullshit. Just write the characters, make them interesting, make them look good, make the storylines work, do throw some bullshit in there to draw some ratings. Vince Russo was good at at one point for using edginess to get ratings. That the nineties was the epitome of trash T V where wrestling was Jerry Springer in a way. And in the eighties it was more of a Saturday morning cartoon. Since it was marketed more to kids in a way. But marketing aside, like I just like the program the same way I like anything else. Not because it's marketed to me. Not because of that. But because it's good. And that's what it should be. I shouldn't have to get on these videos and say we should make a petition on change.org. Fuck change.org. Fuck petitions. Let's make some quality. And y'all niggas can do it because you've been doing it for decades. So this is Mr. Rocket 7 saying suck my dick as usual. Respect the king.